She's 60 and 11 days. Are you saying I shouldn't take it? Not, no. So this is, the, this is the same lady that was on the Prem Pro, right? Yeah. No, the 60 thing is um, if you, is people that have not been on hormone replacement therapy before. So women that start hormone replacement therapy before 60, they can stay on it as long as they need to be on it, as long as it's helping with their symptoms. Um, it's a new start. Somebody that's never been on hormone replacement therapy and they're over 60, for those people, the data says that it increases their risk of cardiovascular disease. Now, let's say that you had never been on it um, and you're 60 and 11 days. And it seems sort of ridiculous that if you were 59 and 364 days, I'd prescribe it for you, but 16, 11 days, I won't. Um, and it is ridiculous, honestly, but you sort of have to draw a line somewhere. And when you start playing this, well, what if they're 11 days over? Well, what if they're a month over? What if they're six months over? What if they're a year over? And you start creeping that line and then you start causing harm. So you kind of have to have a number that you stick with. Uh, but in your case, if you've been on hormone replacement therapy already, there's no reason you can't continue on that past 60. Um, and even switching from one type to another is still safe. Again, as I explained earlier, the issue with the 60 thing has to do with the buildup of issue, sort of cardiovascular problems, because you've been unprotected for all this amount of time. And so what they found in the Women's Health Initiative study, they were starting women on hormones like at 79 um, that had never been on them. And they found that the first two years of hormone replacement therapy, they had a big increased risk of cardiovascular problems. And the thinking was that there was this, these underlying problems because these women had been unprotected for all this time and these problems had built up. And then they started them on hormones and that sort of uncovered this problem and they had a stroke or they had a heart attack or something bad happened to them. Um, and so it was this idea of being unprotected for a long period of time and then suddenly throwing hormones at the situation that caused the problem. For women that have been on hormones since sort of the beginning, so to speak, they haven't had that problem of building up risk. That risk has been um, modified, have been decreased with the hormone replacement therapy. So it's safe to continue. I hope that makes sense. But that's where this sort of 60 thing comes from. But for somebody that's already been on hormone replacement therapy, they can stay on it um, really as long as they need it to help solve the problems that, that, are, that it's fixing. Okay, the next question comes from Catherine. My mother had breast cancer, and so my doctor recommended for me not to take HRT. So a family history of breast cancer does not preclude you from using HRT. And there's two really big studies that really prove this. And they showed that family history of breast cancer is not really a problem. We didn't see increased problems in women on HRT that had this family risk. Now, the caveat to that is that if you have one of these genetic markers that predispose you to breast cancer, for instance, the BRCA gene or like a Lynch 2 syndrome that really increases your risk, your personal risk of breast cancer, and you personally have one of those genetic markers, then it's probably not a good idea to be on HRT. But simply a family history of breast cancer really does not increase your risk of HRT. Now I can tell you that, you know, a lot of us doctors are chicken um, and you know, the, the problem is that a certain amount of women are going to develop breast cancer. Uh, and, you know, the I think the number is like lifetime risk of one out of eight women. And so people are worried, gee, if I prescribe them hormone replacement therapy and then they go on to develop that breast cancer that they were going to get anyway, they're going to come back and blame me and sue me over it. Um, and they might, honestly. And so the idea is that, gee, if they have a family history, maybe that one in eight is now one in six and they're more likely to have a problem and I don't want to be blamed for it. And, you know, I kind of understand that, you know, the medical legal situation in the United States is kind of miserable and people are really worried about getting sued because it can be a career ending problem. Um, and, you know, I am too. Uh, but my, um, my mantra, my whole career has always been do the right thing. Um, if you get sued for doing the right thing, it's a bummer. I mean, it really sucks, but you can sleep at night knowing that you've done the right thing. I mean, so to me, that's kind of what I, what, what, what the way I practice medicine. And the data is very clear that a family history of breast cancer without one of these genetic markers, it's safe to be on HRT. Um, and so, you know, with a conversation and explanation like that um, and shared decision making, I think it's completely reasonable to start HRT, um, even in somebody who's mom had breast cancer. 
That makes sense. The next question is from Carol Ann. My symptoms are almost all energy related. Low energy, brain fog, but not weight gain or hot flashes, luckily. Are those enough symptoms to start HRT? If the symptoms are enough to write in and ask a question about it, they must be bothering you. And so the answer is yes, they are enough. It's amazing. It surprised me actually when I really looked into this, but a minority, less than 50% of patients actually have hot flashes when they start HRT. Um, so hot flashes, night sweats, those are the things that sort of stereotypically we think about when we talk about uh, menopause and perimenopause. But the truth is a lot of women never really get those or don't get them enough to be a problem, but instead they maybe get these other symptoms. And so there's no reason to not use hormone replacement therapy just because you don't have the stereotypical symptom when you still have symptoms um, that can be improved. So, um, you know, it, it, it's sort of funny. When I was in medical school, um, my sister called me at like three in the morning because her husband was short of breath and having a hard time breathing. And she wanted to know what, what I thought she, she should do. I said, April, if you're worried enough to call me at three in the morning, hang up the phone and call 911. Um, and that's sort of kind of how I feel about your question. If you're worried enough to be on this forum and, and ask this question, this must be enough to be bothering you. Um, and if these symptoms are bothersome and, and getting in the way of what you want to do and making you not feel your best, then you might as well take the medication that's going to make them better and you're going to feel better and it's going to improve your quality of life. Um, so yeah, absolutely. I think those are enough um, to start HRT if they're, you know, an, enough that it's getting in the way of what you want to do.